Good to have you join me for another edition of Charlie Leaks. And do remember these dates, the 25th and the 29th of March. Why? Because those are the days in which the Super Eagles and the Black Stars of Ghana will trade tackles all in a bid to qualify for the FIFA World Cup in Qatar. Only one team can represent. Now, which one will it be? How confident are these teams? We spoke to two of Ghana's finest journalists in the persons of Benjamin Graham and, of course, Nuhu Adams as well. And these were their thoughts as far as this particular qualifier is concerned, right here on Charlie Leaks. All right, Nuhu, um, how are you? How are you doing? It's been a long time I saw you. Uh, last time we saw was a couple of weeks ago at the Africa Cup of Nations in Cameroon. How are you? Yeah, I'm, be I'm doing very fine. Um, the Cameroon experience was awesome, even though Ghana couldn't go further as we were expecting. But I think the experience in Cameroon was, was just um, an exciting one, and it was my first African, so... Um, that was that was amazing for me. Okay, Ben. Uh, good to see you again. Um, I hope you enjoyed every bit of the Africa Cup of Nations in Cameroon. It was exciting, now, wasn't it? He around everything was fine. Um, I was up to a politician anyway. So I'm hoping to join your troops. All right, let's talk about the fallouts of the Africa Cup of Nations. Um, Ghana didn't get past the first round um, at the competition. Uh, from what we hear on this side, an inquiry was instituted. What exactly has happened, you know, since, do I use the term, since the dust has settled? Or has the dust really settled as far as your football is concerned? Uh, well, uh, it was an emb embarrassing one for Ghana because um, I think in the history of the AFCON, um, this was the AFCON we could describe as the worst ever in the history of the country. But Ghana have never in any AFCON finished a group with just one point without winning any single game. Mm. So looking mm. at the disappointing nature of our exit in the group stages, um, decisions were supposed to be taken. And as we all know, Milovan Rajivach has been sacked. Um, there are new technical team designed for the Nigeria playoff games. So uh, we are looking forward to it, but it was always going to come that Milovan Rajivac was was not going to be at the helm of affairs after that um, embarrassing and disgraceful African campaign. Uh, we, we are hoping that um, Otoado, who is now the interim manager, and then um, Chris Hilton being the technical advisor, together with the two assistants, Masu Didi Duamani, and then George Watson will make sure Ghana will try as much as possible to qualify for the World Cup. And we know it's not going to be an easy one. We we are playing against Nigeria, and we, as we all know, Nigeria, our brothers, our neighbors, our rivals, our everything. So it's not going to be an easy game. And on paper, Nigeria are favorite. Looking at the sort of quality and players Nigeria will parade against Ghana, um, it is always going to be, be difficult. So we, we look, we are looking up to it. Uh, what Otuado and his charges bring on board um, against. Nigeria next match in the playoffs. Okay, let's talk about the Black Stars um, in preparation for the all-important uh, qualifiers for the FIFA World Cup. What's going on in Ghana? Um, how ready are the Black Stars for this, knowing that the dates have been shifted from the 25th, now it's the 25th and the 29th as well? We ask if the Black Stars um, For now, as we speak, I would say that it, it doesn't appear a team that is ready um, in a sense that, one, we just had a coach is coming in and we're talking about Otuado pursuiting uh, and having um, another assistant coach in, in, in the person of George Boateng. And then you do also have players basically being talked to, especially new ones coming in. If we are to pick those who played at those who are saying that the team isn't good, so we need a new team to play that competition. And Charles, to be honest with you, we haven't really heard from the two coaches or the coaches that have been appointed, uh, so to speak, if you like, because there hasn't really been any official announcement as those coaches that are going to lead the Black Stars. We haven't heard that. And as you speak now, 
everything seemed to be in desire. It was too sure what the plan is regarding the Black Stars and the game. So it, it, it's pretty much dicey. We, we, we hear in news about a guava in England talking to players and all those things. That is not the same story here. And the way he even talks about venue, I did re- re- talk about it back in Cameroon and, and all that. So there seems to be some bit of confusion regarding how the team is being prepared for individuals who are going to lead the team. And so, every, like I said, we're not too sure what the plan is regarding preparation, but um, is the hope that between this week to next week, we should be hearing something from the FA, maybe from the government as well, regarding how the Black Stars need to plan for this game. Uh, it, 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 was, it was quite a, a dicey situation for the Ghana Football Association and the Sports Ministry. You know, Chris Hilton um, is being pushed to be the Black Stars coach from the government. And then we have, we, we, we've seen political leaders in the country um, talking good about Chris Hilton. They want him to be the Black Stars coach, but the Football Association had already taken a decision that we will need an interim manager for the playoffs. So they settled on appointing Otoaru. That's why Otoaru is, is going to see the Black Stars through the playoff. After the playoff, if Chris Hilton is going to be the manager, we, we will all get the announcement from the Ghana Football Association. Um, you know, when you compare the two coaches, clearly, Q-Sitting is above all of them. We know the, the, the sort of um, certificate and the documents q is, is having. So it, it was always going to be difficult to, to appoint any coach above um, q as the head for the Black Stars. But the decision is that Q. Hilton will offer an advice to Otoado and the other two who have been appointed on an interim basis. Then after the playoffs, Chris would Chris Hilton will take over as the head coach of the Black Stars. This is the situation. This is a compromise between the Ghana Football Association and the government of Ghana. All right, but speaking from your perspective, um, are you comfortable with the appointment of Chris Hutton as a technical advisor and Otto Ado as an interim coach? What exactly are their responsibilities? Well, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a matter of, um, if you like, power play because the, the government actually wanted Chris Hutton to be the head coach. The FA wants Otto Ado to be the coach. Now, in order to have the harmony, because I had explained to people that if the government appoints his huge team, the FA would have to work with him. Now, the FA also wants Otuado, which means that there's going to be a conflict there because that is not going to be their man. So how do they work together? Because Ghana Football Association is a manager of the national teams for the government. And so if the management says that we don't want this person and the board of just, I mean, so to speak, the government says that this is the person we want. How would the management able, be able to create your team? So to have that harmony, they decided to say, okay, Chris is going to be the technical advisor and then Otuado is going to be the coach. Now going further, just after the Ghana-Nigeria clash, there's going to be some changes. And these changes mean that perhaps we're going to have Chris Hutin permanently taking charge of a team for whatever time it is. But between now and after that clash between Ghana and Nigeria, this is the arrangement. Chris Hutin, Tenka advisor, Otuado, the coach. After that clash, we are told that there's going to be some changes. And so we are waiting for that communication to come in. But typically, like I said, there's, there's so much conflict going on re- between um, the FA and government regarding who is going to be in charge of the Black Stars. And it's, it's a shame and it's scary that as we speak, we are not too sure how the team is going to shape up for the game. And like I did indicate early on, if we listen to Nigerians and how the Nigerian team or the technical team are just going all over the place, picking or uh, naturalizing players to come and play for the Super Eagles, that is not a story. We're talking about um, how to not day. That story seems to be fading out because you don't really get to see the zeal in the player, whether he wants to play for Ghana or otherwise. And there are other players who have been talked to. Salus says he wanted to come and play for Ghana after the protracted, you know, conversations with the with Ghana Football Association and all that. So there's so much going on. But as I said, like I said, we're not too sure how the team will, will shape up 
um, for this particular clash? Yeah, that's that's that is that, that's the decision and that's the situation. Um, Chris Uchin will take over the Black Stars, whether Ghana qualifies or not, because that's what the the the, the Ghana Football Association and the government believe in. What they, they, they are targeting is to win the African Cup of Nations in 2023. If you qualify for the World Cup, it's a bonus. We will still prepare uh, well and then make sure we go and make an impact in Qatar. But if we are unable to qualify, Christian will take over the team, build a new team and make sure after, after 2023 now because we are going to win the ultimate. So this is the situation, this is the decision. All right, um, Nuhu, talk to me about the controversy that's been raging in the camp of the Black Stars. Um, I need you to confirm that because we hear back here that there's a lot of talk about um, underhand tactics engaged in by players. I'm, I'm talking here about, about stories making the rounds that there's juju in the national team of the Black Stars ahead of this qualifier against the Super Eagles of Nigeria. And some players don't want to play for the Black Stars. And one particular name uh, would be Kudus, who says he will never play for the Black Stars again because he believes that the source of his injury is as a result of being a victim of the underhand tactics of some of the players in the Black Stars. Can you confirm any of this? Well, um, I think the, the, the stories of Juju in the Black Stars come started way back in 2012 um, after the African Cup of Nations. Um, the, the, the then head coach of the Black Stars, Goran Stevanovic, was, was, was bitter and he complained that most of the players were using Juju at the camp. That's why he couldn't get the best out of the team. This is not, this is not the first time we are hearing um, stories like this. It, it always comes whenever we, we, we are at a tournament whether at the World Cup or at the, uh, at the Cup of Nations. It is something I think authorities have, have decided not to take it serious. If authorities have taken it serious, maybe by now we could have um, find a solution to it. Because since 2012, it has always been that some players are using juju in camp against other players, against players they are competing at, the, at, at their positions. I quite remember after the 2014 World Cup, um, our uh, goalkeeper, Adam Larson, for I said, uh, made similar revelations after the World Cup. And ever since, he has not been part of the Black Stars because of um, the, 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 these um, allegations or these claims. So I think the authorities must take it up. Whether true or not true, they still, they, have, they still have to take it up, do their investigations, and then find um, a very good solution to it. Either than that, it will keep on coming. It will always come when things are not going on well with the national team and certain players. The injury to Mohamed Kudus was quite shocking because just after kickoff against South Africa, six minutes, Kudus was off. Then the injuries has been reoccurring. That's why the player believes maybe someone or some people are behind his injury. But we can't confirm that. We cannot deny that too until we decide to do proper investigations into this, then we can say this is the problem and this is the solution we can um, have for the team. So I think it's, it's, it's a matter of something that, that has been part of the team all this while, just that uh, we, we just put a blind eye on, 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 the, on the allegations and situation. I mean, the story about Juju didn't start today. It's been, it's been lurking around um, the national team or national teams in Ghana for quite some time. Even the 2014 FIFA World Cup, we even had stories that uh, even Kevin Prince Button went for somebody's boots and had injuries and all those stories. And remember, before even Andre Ayu wore the 10 jersey, it was Kujia Samoa was wearing it. And Kujia Samoa uh, indicated that anytime he's, he's asleep, he gets uh, nightmares. He gets like a lion or a tiger <laughs> chasing him and all those things. And then he gets up one day and says, I'm not wearing the 10 jersey again. I want to wear a different jersey and then play my football. So these stories are just there. You know, it's only when the national team is losing or has lost, you know, some matches or other things, that's when these stories come out. And, and it's quite a very sad one. You know, Kudus played against South Africa in Ghana and scored a very wonderful goal. And just after that, he picked up an injury and people said, ah, that's the story. Hey, they're, they're doing it to him. Um, even Dan Lamate came. He also picked up a certain injury for some time. And then people said, ah, hey, 
it's another thing. So it's sometimes I feel um, it's the way some the media and people around some of these players, the managers or agents, also um, put out this information out there. Because there's always a fear of competition in the team. There are those who feel that, hey, if you're coming in, you need, you're com- going to compete with someone. And so you need to fortify yourself before you come. The slightest thing they talk about Juju. But we said that if Juju plays football or has played football, I'm sure the African team should be winning World Cups by now. But that's not a story. Mm. So why would players mm. be fighting amongst themselves or be hurting themselves because of that and yet talk about team harmony and togetherness? It doesn't work. Senegal won the AFCON. I'm not too sure we're going to hear things about Juju in the Senegalese national team. But let, I'm, I'm, like I said, we are not hearing things like that. And so that's the problem. That's absolutely the problem. And, and I, I think sometimes the media, we also blow some of these stories out of proportion and also put some fear in those who willingly will want to play for the Black Stars. Because there are Ghanaian players out there who are also willing to say that I want to play for Ghana. But when they get to hear these stories, they take a back seat because they're like, hey, would I want to come and get injured? And, and I find out that somebody is doing me and all those things. There was this young man, Kwesi Apia, who came to play for, I think, in 2013 or so, Afcon, and was even scoring some beautiful goals for Ghana. I mean, he picks up an injury and he's been off for like a year or two and nobody even talks about him anymore. And so there are people who think that, ah, he also got infected with the juju stuff. And so this, this is the, the way it's been played <laughs> out. You know? And it's, it's, it's very sad that whilst mm. we're talking about um, making progress and qualifying to the World Cup and to the AFCON and the rest, we are hearing stories of players um, outdoing each other. And then what happens? They don't go anywhere. They just mess the whole team up. So I think sometimes it's also the way the story, these stories are blown out there by the media. At the slightest injury to a player or anything that happens, it is attributed to Juju, which is, which is for me very disappointing. All right, talk to me about um, Callum Hudson Odoi. Um, is he going to be part and parcel of the Black Stars uh, for this particular qualifiers, or will Ghana have to wait a bit longer? And does he really want to play for the Black Stars? Um, from from the top of Kalum Hotinodo, he has not confirmed whether he will play for Ghana or not. But the Ghana Football Association and some government officials have been pushing. They, they've been talking to him just to get his consent to, to play for Ghana. He's totally out of the playoffs. Well, Kalum Hotinodo will, will, will not be part of the Black team to face the Super Eagles in the playoff. Because even if... Hosonodo decide to represent Ghana today. The nationality switch will take about two to three months. It's looking at the, 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 the moment or the time that we are having at our hand with the playoffs. It is not possible that he can get a Ghanaian passport before he can, he can play for the Blasters. So, Kalim Hosonodo is totally out. Uh, players like Tyreek Lamte is also out. Other players that have come in, in the news in recent times, and Tuan Temeno, all of them are out. The only player who can be available to face Nigeria is Mohamed Salish, who plays for Southampton because he doesn't hold any nationality except being a Ghanaian. He hasn't also played for any national team except the Ghana national team. So if we are able to get Salish, that one, I can I can say that he is going to play against Nigeria. But Kalamu Sonodo, Tarek Ramte and others, um, it will be very difficult for us to get them to, to face Nigeria. All right, let's talk about player inclusion. And um, what's the story with Mohamed Salisu and um, Harrison Afoul, I think it is. Uh, last time he played for the Black Stars was back in the World Cup in 2014. We hear stories about him being recalled uh, for this particular uh, World Cup qualifier. And with Salisu, what's the story with him? Does he want to play for the Black Stars or not? Well, Salusu, the last time, has made it clear that he wants to play. I mean, he did have a discussion with some, I think his dad did speak to him and some family friends or members did speak to him. The whole story about Salusu is very interesting. Um, he was part of a juvenile team that played um, a, a competition. In fact, um, prior to the selection of the team, uh, I think it was at a, at a 17 or so, his argument is that somebody asked that, he pays some money before he gets selected. And mm-hmm. because he did not, 
he didn't get selected and then eventually he moves out. So that pain and bitterness is in him that I want to play for my country and somebody's demanding money from me before I play. And for that matter, he felt that, listen, um, it is not a place that you want to die for. It's not a place that you want to really kill yourself and help grow. So I wasn't going to be part of anything. But um, there's been a lot of talk. Politicians have waded into this argument. And at uh, the point, they even asked um, one football arbitrator, Laji Brusa, to speak to him. He was a bit rude to the man, and the man then said that no, he's not going to um, talk to the young man again. Uh, for, unfortunately for Salisu, the, the man gets into the Black Stars Management Committee as a member, but then there are other uh, top people who went and approached um, the young man and said, hey, guy, uh, Ghana needs you. Um, everybody wants you to come and play. So he's rescinded his um, decision, and he says he's going to be available for, for the game against Nigeria. Um, Currently, they've been the goalkeepers trainer, if you like. Um, I just read a report where he said that there are 15 goalkeepers that he's monitoring. And everybody is like, what are you talking about? If Wolokot, <laughs> who was imposed in AFCON, is not good enough, there are like, equally good goalkeepers in Ghana. You don't need 15 goalkeepers to, to monitor. And so, so that's also another issue. So like I said, there's a lot of confusion going on regarding who's supposed to play what at what time. And then you remember Jeffrey Stubb hasn't really played a part in the team, even though there are those who say that he's having a good time uh, with um, mm -hmm. his team, uh, Leicester. Also, the, the Harris Napo story, well, it's a bit interesting because that's the same thing we did with Jonathan, Jonathan Mensah, where he hadn't played a part for the Black Stars for quite some time, and then he was picked up to play in Afcon. He didn't even get to even play and all that. So currently, the team hasn't really gotten to know who is qualified for that. I mean, there are those who are also saying that Andrea Yu is at the twilight. He doesn't seem to have the firepower in him anymore, so we don't need him. And, and that's also another argument and all that. There's even, um, I don't know if you had a report where the, um, our parliament says that they want to have Andrea Yu to come um, and, and be investigated, or there's going to be an investigation into what happened in, in Cameroon. So Andrea yeah, Yu yeah, needs to, yeah, 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 and all that. Yeah, yeah. So all this confusion, it, it's happening because it's like everything is just not in order. So nobody is too sure what Ghana really wants to do ahead of this game. Whilst the Amaji Phoenix and Iguabons and the Reza are scouting, moving out there, talking to Nigerian players, trying to organize the side, we are just simply not sure what we want to do. Because like I said, even the venue for the competition, it's also another question. And, and we are not too sure at what time is going to be ready for Nigeria to meet Ghana but in Cape Coast or wherever. But we're just waiting to see what happens. Yeah, um, Salisu uh, ha, ha, has been talked to on several occasions, but he always says that he's not ready to play for the national team. That's why I'm being skeptical. skeptical. I can't say, yes, we are, we are going to have him for the playoffs, but from sources close to the player, I learned maybe this time he will, he will accept the invitation to, to play for the Black Stars. So um, I can't be optimistic about Mohamed Salisu. But probably, maybe, um, we, we might be lucky to get in this time. Yes, um, you know, the, 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 the call-ups are yet to, to be known. Um, Otoharu and his assistants are yet to um, make their list known. But, you know, uh, rumors, speculations are always going to be when call-ups are, are, are coming up. So maybe um, sources close to the player can confirm that he's coming back to the national team. And to be honest with you, one of the weakest links um, in the Black Stars team is the right back position. Adi Adam, who plays for Reading, um, has been playing. He has been consistent with the national team, but he hasn't been able to command that position. And I think maybe if the technical handlers of the national team feels they they, they, they will need the the experience of Arsenal for the playoff games, yes, why not? He has been there before. He has played at the world stage. That's the 2014 World Cup. He has played at the um, African Cup of Nations, he has played with experience in Cup Champions League and all other competitions. So, Arsenal will, will always be ready to play for the Black Star. But I can confirm or say whether he's going to give us the same input they had given us earlier. But per experience, I think Arsenal will, will be much a better replacement for Andy Yadom, who many people believe is not up to the level of the Black Stars. All right, um, feeling the pulse of the people of Ghana um, on the streets of Accra, wherever it is, what exactly are the people feeling? Because, I mean, we're talking about two of the biggest national teams 
as far as African football is concerned, and one of them will not be in Qatar. What's the feeling of the average Ghanaian on the streets? To be honest with you, Charles, after the failures, or if you like, the poor performance in Cameroon, Ghanaians are in two minds. Um, even Parliament, the, 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 the seat of, or perhaps the, the legislature, they're also in two minds. There are those who believe Ghana should forfeit the World Cup and, and plan ahead. There are those who still believe that when it comes to Ghana and Nigeria, it's just like Kotoko and Hearts of Folk, there's no formula. There's no fun guy. Mm. It's, it's a match that if you take your chance, you win. And so there are those who still believe that, listen, when it's Nigeria, hey, whatever the case is, we can beat them. And so the Nairns on the street are in two minds. They're angry with the team. They're not happy with the players. They feel the team is not in good shape to play. And, and, and for that matter, we should just forget about, forget about the World Cup because technically we are not ready and the players themselves psychologically are not ready. There are those who also feel that, okay, this should be the turning point. At least if we're able to get a win against Nigeria, it will be able to boost that confidence going forward because Nigeria's got all the stars over there. Nigeria seems to be a very organized side. But if Ghana is able to, you know, scale that particular head, oh, hey, that's a good one for Ghana. And so that should even help us to prepare well for the World Cup. So there seem to be, again, conflict, confusion uh, in, in town. So people are like, let's just forget about the, the, the World Cup and plan for the next two or three years. There are those who say, hey, when it comes to Nigeria and Ghana, forget it. It's, it's, not, it's not about they have a form or we have a form. No, this, this game is between two, two guys who, who really don't care much about um, their strength. I mean, if you take your chance, you win. And then they go back to the early 2000s where Ghana had to parry local players to play against Nigeria with the Wanku Kanu, Jeju coaches and the rest and all that. And so there are those who still believe that, I mean, there's still a chance for Ghana against Nigeria. And others also believe that, listen, there's no chance at all. If, if Charles, if you we are watching what is happening with the Guavon watching Arsenal, with Thomas Party and the rest, listen, Ghanaians are scared right now. You know, and, and it doesn't make it any better when you take a look at the tweets uh, put forward by the president of the Nigeria Football Federation in the person of Amadou Penik, where he says the Super Eagles will not be in Qatar just to make up the numbers or to come there and sightsee. So there's a level of confidence coming from the Football Federation back in Nigeria. Do you think Nigerians are being overconfident ahead of this game? I can't fault Nigeria um, for being overconfident because if you look at the record back in Cameroon, 100% in the group stages, I mean, check the team. Senegal won, they have gone all right though, but the performance of Nigeria in the group stages was the talking town. You yourself would attest to the fact that, I mean, it was a, a relatively good performance from Iguavon. I mean, having to take charge of the team prior to the tournament. And Nigerians um, seem to have, you have an organized team already. That's the fact. An organized team that is intact. A team that you can still use for the qualifiers. As compared to a Ghana team that had to let go the coach, that people are not happy with the players and think that some don't deserve to be in a squad. And so if we're going to talk about the qualifiers currently between Ghana and Nigeria, um, Charles, there's going to be tweaking. There's going to be some changes because new players will then have to find a way into the national team. Now they have to gel with whichever players that they come and meet. So the Ghanaian side are actually is not organized coming into this competition. And that's why there's, a, there's that fear because everything is now new. And I have said to my friends um, in Ghana that then the Ghanaians should have a certain communication because it's going to be difficult. If a government comes with all guns blazing, and look at that, look at the technical side of Nigeria. For instance, you have us in a government there, and then you have Amokachi also joining. I'm told that uh, Joseph Yebo has also joined. And, and these are players, um, or former players, who are well respected back home. And then you come and talk about Ghana, where you have Chris Yutin. He's coming to Ghana for the first time. He really hasn't got to know the culture, even though we're told that he's of Ghanaian descent. Otuado, yes, he did play. He spent a lot of time scouting for Dortmund and all that. And so people are questioning whether he's got the clouds to lead the Black Stars. George Boateng is with Aston Villa. Yes, he's been working with the youth side and nurturing players, but has he got the clouds when it comes to the African game and all that? So there are a lot of question marks regarding the technical side of Ghana, regarding what they're able to do, as compared to the established names in Nigeria who themselves 
have had to work assiduously with, with the FA and then what they can uh, put together. So that is where the issue is. So there's a relatively calm, you know, desire in Ghana. People are not really bothered about what's going to happen. Yes, Nigeria can be confident because, and Charles, let's look at the business side. If you were FIFA and Nigeria qualifies for the World Cup, how much tickets would Nigeria give you? How much, um, you know, endorsement or money is Nigeria going to bring it? Obviously, a lot. So in terms of the business side, and, and of course, if you have um, um, Dangote making it clear that if Nigeria fails to qualify for the World Cup, it's actually not going to be in Qatar. Hey, that's money uh, missing over there or it being lost over there. So you certainly <laughs> would wish that um, this man gets to um, Qatar with an entourage, a huge one, which is going to be money for, for the organizers. So there's the other side of it as well. Oh, this, this is a tight question. Um, as a Ghanaian, I always want Ghana to qualify ahead of Nigeria, but football does not go the way you want. It's about what your players can do on the field of play. We know the quality of Nigeria, a team that can boast of um, Victor Osime, Kelechi Hianacho, um, Simon Moses, um, Wilfred Ndidi. You can never underrate such a team. And looking at the performances of the Black Stars coming from the World Cup qualifiers and to the Afghan in coming with that disappointing um, exit at the group stages. Everything is totally Nigeria's way. I believe on paper Nigeria are favorite, but you know, this one being a, a West African derby, there could be one or two um, situations where maybe Ghana can take advantage of and then make sure they, they, they surprise Nigeria and qualify to the World Cup. But on paper, looking at the squad quality and everything, I think Nigeria are slightly on top and maybe we might see Nigeria going through ahead of Ghana. But we shouldn't write off Ghana. This is West African Derby. Uh, thank you, Nuhu Adams, for talking to us. And Charlie Leakes, uh, we'll hook up with you in the nearest future. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me on the show. All right, Benjamin, I want to thank you for your time. And I'm sure that if I put you to the sword and ask you to make a prediction for this qualifier, you would say Ghana to advance. So do I need to take you there or not? Huh? This is a thing. This is a thing. You know African football, so this is it. If Nigeria had played the first leg, I would have been comfortable with saying that Ghana was going to win. But here's the case, you're going to play the first leg in Ghana, and then the second leg will be in Nigeria. Charles, this is African football. I will not be able to see anything. So all I would say is that it's, um, I wish my Ghanaian team good luck and then see what happens. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Benjamin. Uh, we'll, uh, pro ho hopefully, hopefully, I'll see you in Ghana for the first leg. Hopefully, I'll be so happy to see you. I'll be so happy to see you. Mm. So, so happy to see you. All right, all right, do take care now. Absolutely amazing what players would do all in a bid to maybe play for their national team or not play for their national team. All of these talks about Juju, absolutely ridiculous. If that were the case, one African team should have won the World Cup by now. But those are the inconsistencies and of course the controversies that surround African nations going into any major tournaments. Well, we are looking forward to those two dates. Once again, remember, the 25th and the 29th of March, one of these teams will be in Qatar for the FIFA World Cup.